Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode right here on V-City. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most prestigious universities in the world and we're going to be talking about this university that is the top number one destination for people who want to be doctors in the future and, and we're going to be talking about Johns Hopkins University. All right, so Johns Hopkins University is, is an American private research university. All right, we've talked a lot about publicly funded universities, but this is an American private university. It's located in Baltimore, which is located in Maryland. It remains the number one leader in research and teaching. This school is like, if you wanna do research, you wanna be in academics, this is the school to go to. This is the school to aspire to go to. They have more than 21,000 students in this university, and it's still very competitive to get into. This university was ranked 10th. This university was ranked 10th according to the US and News World Report, and in 2019, it comes in 12th according to the Times Higher Education. So the one thing that distinguishes this university from other universities is the, from other universities is the research. Like, a good number of students who are in their undergrad, not even the graduate students, good number of students in their undergrad, about 80% of them get to participate in research, in actual research, which is a great opportunity. A lot of them get to work alongside like top researchers, top, top uh, professors and things like that, which is like not really heard of in other universities. So this university has campuses in Maryland, like I mentioned before, they have in Italy, in China, and in Singapore. I would easily, I could easily talk to you about all the different degrees that are offered in this university, but they do have Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Sciences, they have master's degrees, PhDs, you name it, and in just about every division and field that you can think about. Now let's talk about getting to, get, let's, talk, let's talk about getting into this university because they accept about 8.4% of how many, like, of about 27,000 applicants. Can you imagine that rate? That means you have to be like the best of the best to get into that school. And we're actually gonna talk about that later on in this video. Now, if you get into the university, housing is like pretty good. You gotta live on campus. It's almost mandatory to live on campus in your first and second year, which is great. That way you don't have to think about where you gotta stay. You can just focus on studying because going to the school needs you to focus and study the dorms are usually separated between genders and but now it's like changed up you can like have co-ed it's pretty much all co-ed and that way it's like you can you can have males and females in in the same dorm however you get to like choose where you live in your sophomore year because like a lot of people tend to go off campus and live in nearby apartments and uh, and like housing and things like that or cr just close by to the school which is typical for most universities. So the truth is that about 45% of the student body lives off campus and about 55% live on campus. So if you're thinking about going to the school, be ready to spend about $54,000 on tuition. Like it's expensive. It's pretty expensive and there, there are scholarships to universities like this, but it's pretty expensive. And because of its high reputation, you can understand why the price even goes much higher so what i'm trying to say here is that if you love research if you like research if this is what you want to do then this is the best place for you to go hands down because you begin to get into real research in your undergraduate study so like this is the best place for you to go to it's a research hub and a research powerhouse there's so many job fairs offered the positions that are being offered if you apply it's most likely you would get a position somewhere as a research assistant or a lab assistant or something similar it's also pretty easy for you to contact professors if you're interested in what they're doing if you if you're interested in research you can contact professors be like hey i like what you're up to can i join in it's, it's actually that simple there's a lot of student groups on campus the thing about the student groups on campus is that it's not easy to get into so basically like because so this is what i wanted to talk about because you're like because the school has so many intelligent people people that are like the best in their classes the best of the best they come in and then they feel like they find themselves in the middle of the pack and then it's it feels bad for them because 
they were once so powerful in high school and all of a sudden they were dropped down to the middle because a lot of people in this school are so intelligent and that because a lot of people are trying to join into group join groups join clubs etc it's easy for people to be like hey uh, let's limit the number of people that come into these clubs how many universities have you heard of that limit the number of students that get into clubs how many but they, the John Hopkins has to do this just because for the share because of the share amount of people that are trying to get into clubs and councils and all of that kind of stuff but it is good because you get to meet people who think like you and they that way you can also grow and make friends and all that kind of stuff Oh my goodness, how how do they keep making noise in this house? So what I'm trying to say here is that you might even have to apply for to get into like some clubs, do an interview to get into some clubs. It's that crazy. Now, some people are asking about the, the party scene and how is it there? A lot of people don't party in this school just because of how difficult it is to get in and to stay in the school. But it does not mean they're parties. They're not parties, rather. A lot of the clubs do have parties every now and then. Uh, a lot of people come together and have parties in a lot there's some dorms that have a lot of popular kids so there's a lot of parties going on there but you have to be careful because these students they work really hard so when they party they're going back to study they're going back to work so don't don't get yourself don't get it mixed up don't get it twisted one downside about the school is that this is this is still perspective it depends on you a lot of people who take that don't think it's a pretty place think it's not the best of areas it's like not as beautiful as let's say british columbia it's not that beautiful even i personally don't think it's as gorgeous as it could be but it's not about the location right it's about the education you're going to get at that university so uh, i suppose we could just focus on that instead some people like good scenery right and a lot not a lot of people enjoy baltimore it's just that's just the way it is so what i'm gonna say is that it's best for you to visit the school visit the environment and see if that is the best place for you to go to some people could you could go there and just have a bad vibe and be like hmm i don't like the vibe here at all i don't like this vibe in this university and then you could just be like okay i don't want or you could go there and be like hey i don't care about the environment i i strongly want to study here so there's a, the academics are really strong and uh, the, P, the community is pretty strong the environment may not be the best the other con is that baltimore gets boring fast there's not that much to do the other con is that the dating sucks. Not a lot of people who are interested in looks go there because a lot of people are interested in STEM and studying and engineering and all that stuff are in the university. So it's a trade-off, it's a trade-off. So if you're not in the school, one advice I would give you is that, one advice I would give you is that make a compelling story for admissions. Make sure that you tell them exactly what you wanna do. For example, if you're in high school right now, be like, hey, I really wanna combine sciences with entrepreneur with entrepreneurship and that's my goal in life and then maybe open up a club in high school maybe open up a club in high school where it's like you're all you're doing is teaching people or learning with your friends how to become a scientific entrepreneur for example elon musk and put that in your in your story and talk about how that's where you want to go to that's what, exactly what you want to do and make it very clear cut make it very uh, almost a little bit emotional, but make sure that it looks like you know exactly where you're going. That really helps when it comes to going into a school like Johns Hopkins, because what they want are, they're looking for people who are focused, people, engineers and scientists and medical doctors who are focused. If you also want to be a medical doctor, this is a number one destination for you in the United States. So feel free to apply to Johns Hopkins University. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the like, don't forget to subscribe and the bell. That way you get to notified whenever we have new videos. Thank you for watching and have yourself a wonderful day.